Job chapter number 2. We begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without a cause. Let's pray. Our Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy that endureth forever. Lord, I'm reminded as the psalmist cried, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? God, we don't know why you're so good to us and why you love us, but God, we are so grateful that you do. Now, Father, before we started service, we asked for you to do something unusual and supernatural. We ask you to give us discerning spirits to be able to mind the Lord tonight. Father, it's by no accident that I was unsettled on the message, and it was by no accident that you laid on Brother Clint's heart to sing that song. So, Father, I pray you'd help us from the Word of God. I pray you'd bless us to be seated in heavenly places, and I pray you'd encourage your people. Lord, if you don't come tonight, you bless us with another day tomorrow. We'll face this old world. We'll face this old flesh. We'll face the devil. God, your people need to be encouraged. They need to be strengthened in their inner man. That, Lord, having done all to stand, they can stand therefore. Now, God, do great things amongst us tonight. Speak to hearts. Help your people. God, bless those that are working with the children on the other side in master clubs. Uh, and God, uh, 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 bless as only you can and touch hearts. And we'll thank you for what you do. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. And amen. In these verses, I want you to notice, first of all, we find an appointment. Look again at verse number 1. It says, Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. I do not uh, begin to pretend that I understand all the Bible. Uh, I do know that Job was the first book written of the Bible. Uh, I also know that uh, uh, there are a lot of things we don't know because half of it hasn't been told yet. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things that God uh, didn't see the importance for us to know. We did, we're on a need-to-know basis. Uh, we didn't need to know, so he didn't expound on it. Uh, 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 the Bible lets us know that if uh, they'd pinned down all the works of Jesus, that the world couldn't hold the books. Uh, can you imagine if God pinned down everything that we really uh, 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 will know someday? Can you imagine how many worlds? it would have taken to hold the books, huh? But here we find that somehow, some way, back in eternity past, uh, uh, some way uh, uh, during Job's life, uh, something happens in heaven where there's an appointment when uh, all the angels come and present themselves before God and Satan also uh, shows up. There is an appointment. Uh, I don't know if that uh, uh, still goes on today or not. I don't know. Uh, but I do know this, uh, that it's appointed unto men once to die and after this the judgment. Uh, and I do know that every one one of us are going to stand before God one day and give an account of the deeds done in our body, whether they're good or evil, uh, and we'll give an account of ourselves unto God. Uh, hey, isn't it amazing to know that God not only is going to have us give an account, but God makes all the created beings come and present themselves before him. We find an appointment. Notice the accuser in verse number 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, from whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, from walking up down in it. Revelation 12, 10 tells us that he's the accuser of the brethren. Uh, uh, can I say that uh, he is uh, uh, one that walks to and fro in the earth? Uh, and he walks seeking whom he may devour. Uh, but can I say when it comes to God's youngins, he has to get permission. Uh, uh, but he does 
accuse us. Uh, Brother Phil, you testified that you try to seek after God, you try to get some insight after God, uh, but I promise you, before the throne room of God, uh, Satan will come and say, look at that old Phil. Uh, he doesn't deserve to be sitting on the front row of that church. He don't deserve to be able to read your Bible. He don't deserve those things. Uh, look at him. Look what he done. Look how he used to have foul mouth. And look at all he used to do. And aren't you glad about the time he gets accusing? Uh, hey, uh, we have an advocate with the Father, uh, Christ Jesus the righteous, uh, who stands up and says, Father, uh, and, uh, hey, my blood's been applied to his life. Uh, he's robed in our righteousness. Uh, and the Father says, justified, uh, as if he never sinned. Uh, aren't you glad about that time, Brother Phil? He'll dump a little more on you so you can understand a little more, huh? Uh, but there is an accuser. There is an appointment. But then we find the afflicted in verse number 3. We find, he says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Now, by the way, this is the second time that God's brought Job up to Satan. You know the story. Brother Bobby preached on it so eloquently just a few weeks ago. Job's minding his own business. Job's serving God. Job loves God and shoes evil. Uh, uh, Satan comes looking for somebody to pick on. Uh, uh, probably picking on me or you. Uh, uh, God realized we couldn't handle the devil at this time. Uh, uh, but hey, he said, Hast thou considered Job? Hmm? Satan said, y'all, you blessed him too good. He said, Jake, take away all he has, he'll curse you. God said, go ahead. Huh? Well, that didn't work out too good for Satan. And here Satan comes again. Now, we don't know how much time has passed. See, a lot of times we read the Bible and we just read chapter 1, chapter 2, it must happen immediately. We don't know that. God doesn't always fill in the blanks or gives us the epoch of how much time has passed. I dare say that, uh, uh, listen, they didn't have a, 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 an appointment one day and Job, uh, Satan does all this to Job and the very next day they have another appointment in heaven. The Bible says, and again there came a day. Hmm? I don't know how much time has passed. Um, but I know Job's wounds in his heart haven't healed. He's still suffering from those ten funerals. Amen. Hmm? And the Lord says unto Satan, He says, There is none like him in the earth, a perfect man, upright man, one that feareth God, and sheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his, fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him, destroy him without a cause. We see Job is afflicted. And by the way, Job is afflicted by nothing that he's done wrong. These TV preachers that preach that if you, uh, uh, do, you know, have the faith and you do this, something good's always going to happen. You're never going to have a bad day. They've never read Job. Uh, some church of God people say that if you have any sickness or any problems because you've got problems in your life, you haven't lived right, you haven't done right. Well, they can't say that about Job. Mm -mm. There ever never been anybody like Job. And yet trouble came. Mm -mm. I want to tell you something. Just because we live in a sin-cursed world, trouble can come your way. Man's days are few and full of trouble. Uh, sometimes God allows things to come in our life that has nothing to do with us. It might just come in our life because God knows somewhere down the road we can use that and He can use that in our life to impact somebody else's life. You just don't know. Hmm? You remember the man that was born blind? The disciples asked Jesus, who sinned, him or his parents? Jesus said, neither. This man's blind for the glory of God. Then Jesus opened his blinded eyes. Amen. My dear friends, it's not always about what somebody's done. Now, don't, don't, don't mistake me. Chief, if we get to live in honorary and live in wickedly and don't get right with God like we preached this morning and, and God deals with it, if we don't get right with God, well, trouble will come. And it's not because God's wanting us to be, be a light to somebody else. God's trying to get our attention so we'll get right with him. Mm. But just because somebody's got trouble doesn't mean they're out of the will of God. Mm. So we see he's afflicted. Now you know his legacy. Job's a man that was upright in heart, loved God, eschewed evil, offered up sacrifice, even offered up sacrifice for his children in case they had preventured uh, sin against God and hadn't offered up sacrifice. I mean, he was a righteous man. We know his legacy. Mm. We know his losses. He lost his flocks, he lost his finances, he lost his family. Mm. We also know his love for God. Look at chapter number 1, verse number 20. 
Then Job arose, ran his mantle, shaved his head, fell down upon the ground, and worshipped, said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, naked I shall return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this uh, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Uh, 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 we find in uh, chapter 2, verse number 3, he goes on to say, There's none like him, a perfect man, upright, one that feared God, and stood with evil. Uh, uh, we're talking about a man that loved God. Hmm? But what I'm interested in, what Brother Bobby said that really struck a chord in my heart, is where it said, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Brother Clint talked about being still in that song. Can I say, the Bible says in Exodus 14, 13, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today, for the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17, the Bible says, Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, uh, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord uh, will be with you. Uh, Job 37, 14 says, Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still uh, and consider the wondrous works of God. Uh, Psalms 4, 4 says, Stand in awe and sin not to meet with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. Uh, Psalms 46, 10 says, Be still and know that I'm God. Uh, I will be exalted among the he heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Uh, uh, we find throughout the Bible that God uh, uh, exhorts us to be still uh, and know that he's God. Uh, uh, friend, there are some things just too big for us. Uh, there are some things too great for us. Uh, there are some things that are far beyond our reaches. Uh, and God says, uh, just stand still. Uh, uh, don't run from it. Uh, don't hide from it. Uh, don't try to tackle it yourself. Uh, when the waves of adversity come, uh, when the wind blows against you, uh, just stand still and see how big a God we serve. Uh, see how great he is. Uh, hey, by the time it gets too big for you, he starts rolling up his sleeves uh, to bear his mighty arms uh, to show how big a God he is. Uh, we need to sometimes just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Yes, sir. See his wondrous works. Yes. Know that he is God. Yes. It never ceases to amaze me. People get all bent out of, bent out of shape and you get problems and everything. First thing you do is quit God. They don't quit their job. Uh, they don't quit Facebooking. Uh they don't quit going to ball games. They don't quit eating. They don't quit going and uh, uh, doing this and doing that, but they quit church. Amen. When problems come, the first place you ought to run to is church. Yeah. We had some here this morning. Every time you talk to them, all they do is whine and complain how tough they got it. They're not back tonight. After this morning's message, yes, sir. Wow. not back tonight. They'll show up next Sunday morning. They'll be whining and complaining. This is what you tell them. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God's been trying to help you, but you're ignoring him. No wonder you're whining and complaining. Now John chapter 10, verse number 10, Jesus said this, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I'm come that they may have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. Jesus gave us eternal life, and he gives us an abundant life in him. But that same thief, that same accuser of the brethren, comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I want to preach on out of this verse. Job still held fast his integrity. Satan steals. I want to preach on Satan wants to steal your still. He wants you to run around like a baney rooster with your head chopped off. He wants you to wring your hands and fret. He wants you to doubt God. He wants you to uh, get all uh, uh, out of shape. He wants you to find fault in things so that you don't trust God. He wants to steal your steal. If we'll do what Brother Clint sang on, you'll find that you have a friend that's sticking closer than a brother, and when you're standing still, you're not standing alone. You're standing in the power of God. I want to tell you, Job was not a weak Christian. Job was the epitome of what a child of God should be. 
somebody that regardless of what came his way, he still trusted in God. So when Satan wants to steal your steal, can I say, first of all, he wants to steal your faith. Amen. Wants to steal your faith. As we read this morning in Hebrews eleven six. without faith it's impossible to please God. And can I help you something? If you don't have faith, you won't be able to stand still. Right. Amen. Hmm? He wants to steal your faith. He wants to cause you to doubt. He wants to cause you to fret. He wants to cause you to worry. He wants you to question God. He wants you to do everything possible but trust God. Now, how does he strive to steal your faith? Well, he'll do it through disrupting your emotional state. Hmm? He'll play on your emotions. Hmm? Jibber. Just trying to do right, be right, live right in church, and come in, and and let's let's just pick out Miss Lisa. I haven't picked on her all day. <laughs> let's say you come into church, everybody's having a good day, everybody's fellowship, and everybody's shaking hands, even though you didn't sing the song tonight and all this, just having a good time. But Lisa, don't shake your hand. Matter of fact, you watch her shake Pam's hand, huh? You see her hug Miss Sharon's neck. Well, she doesn't shake your hand. Well, then all of a sudden you get to thinking, what did I do to her? I didn't do anything to her. I can't help it she's the church drunk. I didn't do nothing to her. I didn't do a thing to her. She didn't shake my hand. Hmm? Then all of a sudden, before long, I get to thinking, she's mad at me. She shook Pam's hand. She hugged Sharon's neck. She didn't even shake my hand. She's mad at me. And for long, I get talking myself into it. Now I'm mad at her. <laughs> Never knowing. She's really under a load. She's really facing adversity. But Miss Pam's reached out to her through a text message and told her, Hey, I'm praying for you. Miss Sharon's called her up and said, Hey, I know you're under a load. I'm praying for you. She gets to the church. It's all she can do to get here. She's under load. She sees those two sisters that have reached out to her and she just shows them her appreciation. Uh, but here I am because she didn't shake my hand. I'm thinking she's cross with me. No, she's just under load. Hey, the devil will play on your emotions. He'll put thoughts in your mind. Uh, hey, uh, he'll try to get you alone and isolate you and get you under load. Uh, and he'll try to tear you down emotionally. Listen, I'm blessed to preach all over this country. You know one common theme I'm finding in churches everywhere and talking to pastors and, and everything. You know what I, I'm finding everywhere? Most people, that are, uh, most churches have people uh, uh, come to church on a regular basis that are suffering from depression. Depression. Now listen, we're saved by the grace of God. We're on our way to heaven. If there's anybody that ought to be excited and ought to be in the right mind, it's us. Why do you think so many people are depressed coming to church? Because Satan is attacking their emotional states. Hmm? He wants people to feel like a lesser person. He wants to weigh on them. and He's striving to rob your faith and to upset and steal your still. Hmm? Hmm? Now listen, it's not a sin to be depressed. It's a real thing. You know, I've preached on that. Sidney Weaver still gives me flack over that. I was in a camp meeting last year, and God said to preach that message, I got on depression. Uh, Brother Mike said by the time he left, he was depressed, huh? <laughs> That's probably why God gave me Parkinson's, talking about the man of God. That's how I'm going to tell him that. Huh? I didn't want to preach. It's camp meeting. I didn't want to preach on depression in camp meeting. I want to preach on heaven. Do you know me? If God tells me to preach it, I'm going to preach it. I had no idea the next day the pastor called me in his office for service. He said, who told you? I'm like, who told me what? He said, who told, who's been talking to you? I said, well, what? He said, why would you preach that message? I said, the Holy Ghost told me to preach that message. I said, preach, I didn't want to preach that message. I'm driving all the way down here to Florida. And on the way down here, God said, preach that message. I'm, out, I'm arguing with him two states. God, I don't want to preach. And God said, preach that message. And then that pastor begins to pour his heart out to me. Yeah, he'd been suffering some of the very things that I preached on. Hmm? The devil wants to steal your steal. He wants to steal your faith. And he'll do it through disrupting your emotional state. He'll do it 
through destroying your physical state. I'll tell you something, pain is painful. Amen. And I don't care who you are. When you're hurting, it affects you. And the whole time I'm preaching, all I can think about is I can't say the words like I really say the words normally. My tongue's, you know, just sitting there, got all them spots been ripped out of it. And I'm sitting here thinking like I'm talking like I got my tongue pierced or something. I feel like an idiot. And the devil's telling me, yeah, you ought to sit down and shut up. But I'm going to preach anyway, huh? Amen. But he'll inflict pain on your body if God allows him to, to disrupt your faith. Amen. Mm. Listen, when you go through things and you suffer, the older I get, the more it seems to hurt. Um, but I want to tell you something. It'll weigh on you and it'll cause you not to trust God. He wants to destroy your physical state. If the devil could put you in the ground, he would. And the reason you're not in the ground is God still has something for you to do. But like I say, he wants to steal your faith. He'll do it by disrupting your emotional state, by destroying your physical state, but also by dividing your relationships. Come on. Hmm? Amen. We know that he dealt with Job in his mental state. Look at verse 13. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word for him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Job was grieving his emotional state. His emotions are tore up in verse 13. They, and we know that Satan sought to destroy his physical state. In verse number 4, And Satan answered, Lord said, Skin for skin, yea, that all that a man hath uh, uh, will he give for his life. But for, put forth th thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. We see that it dealt with his physical state. But can I say he strives to divide our relationships to rob us of our faith. Look at verse number 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Hallelujah, he did. Hmm? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Amen. He strives to put a wedge between sometimes even the one you're the closest to to rob you of your faith. Hmm? He wants to divide your relationships. Listen, we need people. Sometimes we don't like to admit that. Why do you think that been the us together? Because we need one another. We need to draw, draw strength one from another. Sometimes we need to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law, the law of Christ. And sometimes we need somebody to bear our burden. Amen. Hmm? And can I say, the, uh, uh, the devil's always trying to divide church members and trying to divide the church and, uh, because we know without unity there's no unction. But can I say, he'll try to divide your own personal relationships, husbands and wives and parents and children and co-workers and all kinds of things just to steal your faith. So he can steal your steal. Steal your steal. Listen, uh, he's a sorry no good devil. He don't fight fair. Amen. And he wants to steal your steal. Uh, you know, this isn't a Bible term, but it's a, it's a term I've seen. Uh, they used to call them church hoppers. I call them jackrabbit Christians. They just jump from here to there and up and down and all around, never get settled in anywhere. There's a problem with somebody like that. Yes, sir. We need to get anchored into the thing. Oh. Amen. You know, one of the real blessings a lot of the preachers come through here is that they always talk about seeing the same faces year after year, time after time. Not long ago, we began talking about folks who have been here 15, 18, 20 years. What a blessing. Uh, but look at how many have bounced around and come and gone. Yeah. Sure. Never get settled, never get anchored. Hmm? Listen, we ought to have, a, have a, 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 a portion in our body that wants us to just get anchored in where God would have us so we can be matured in Him. Yeah. Hmm? The Bible warns us about being tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Hmm? Listen. There's some people looking for the perfect church. Well, I hope they're saved because they're not going to see it until they get to heaven. Amen. Mm. No such thing. But you're going to be hard-pressed to find one better than ours in this area. Yeah. Mm. Just, just calling it like it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So why don't they like it around here? 
if you get close enough to fire, one or two things are going to happen. You're going to get burnt, or you're going to get scared, and you're going to run. Some get so close, and all of a sudden, God starts revealing some things in their life that he's not pleased with, and it's time for them to get all the way in. They don't like that, so they get gone. Hmm? I just don't understand it. I'm going to talk to my buddy Thad. He's lonely. It's good over, brother Thad. It's good over. Come on. How are you? Great. You are? You, know, you look great. Huh? Isn't it amazing how good God is? It is. But isn't it amazing? I don't understand this. Explain this. You've got gray hair. It means you've got a lot of wisdom. Huh? How can people have the same spirit of God in them and yet sit under the same preaching and they don't sit they're where they need to be with God I don't understand that that's a respected person that means God loves you as much as he loves me it means he loves you as much as he loved Abraham I mean he just loves us and that means God saved you Saved me, did the same thing for you in salvation he did for me, but the same spirit in you that he put in me. I mean, God's no respecter of persons. So if it's wrong, it's wrong for that, then it's wrong for me. I just don't understand, folks, it says they're saved and they can just play with the things of God and never get all the way in. I don't understand that. I just don't understand. God don't let me do that. He don't let me blow in and blow out when I want to. huh? He don't let me, you know, never tithe. I don't understand that. Number one, hey, I don't want to meet God only. You know what I'm saying? Uh, listen, uh, as crazy as I drive, some of the crazy things we see on the road, listen, I, I want to be paid up with my ties, huh? <laughs> I just don't understand how some people, they, they just casually serve God. I'm going to tell you something. Something's wrong somewhere. Yes, sir. Hmm? Either they don't know God, or they have so grieved him in their life they don't recognize him. That's all I can say about it. He don't let me live that way, Brother Brian. He don't let me act that way. Huh? I mean, the Holy Ghost bothers me if I even think about laying out. Through all those surgeries and all I went through, missed one service, and that killed me. Huh? Amen. Yeah, but trust me, you didn't want to see me drooling all over myself and come to church and all that. Man, you didn't want to see all that. Hmm? Listen, he wants to steal your faith. And he'll stop at nothing. Keep in mind, he can't do anything unless God permits it. But he won't stop at anything if it's left up to him to destroy your faith. Because he wants to steal your still. While you're standing there taking all the and still and seeing the salvation of the Lord, guess who else is watching? Y'all's children are watching. Your parents are watching. Hmm? Your sister's watching. Are you listening? Your nephew and his family's watching. Huh? But Josh, your brother and family and your sister, all them are watching. Huh? Tony, your siblings are watching. I'm telling you, while you are standing uh, and while you are taking everything the devil throws at you and you still are saying, blessed be the name of the Lord, hey! Folks are taking note of that. Amen. That's why he wants to steal your still. Because as long as you're anchored into Jesus, the devil don't have a leg to stand on and neither does your lost loved ones. But, oh, Brother Kevin, you throw in the towel. They say, oh, I knew there wasn't nothing to it. Hmm? Yes, sir. Huh? He wants to steal your faith. Can I say this? He wants to steal your foundations. Hmm? You know what separates us from the charismatics and everybody else? The Word of God. We believe everything this book says. And we rightly divide this book. We stand on this book. There's over 300 different religions and denominations in the United States today. Why is there so many? Because the devil's the author of confusion. He wants to confuse people. And there are people that are putting their faith in religion. How many of you used to have faith in religion? Raise your hands. I want to see them. Look at you. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. And Jesus came by and you put your faith in him. Hmm? It's not about religion. It's about a relationship with the creator who made you. 
Amen. He died for you, wants to save you. Amen. Mm, what a blessing to have some foundational truths in your life. Hey, I, I, I realize, come what may, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the, man, of the mouth of uh, uh, by the word of the Lord. Uh, uh, listen to me, friends. Uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but you can still stand on the word of God. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, that God placed me on a rock, uh, a foundation on Jesus Christ, uh, and he gave me his promises. Uh, and hey, what a blessing to know what thus saith the Lord. Why do you think there's such an attack on the Bible? Hmm. Because Satan's trying to steal foundations. Sure. Jordan just told me about a new King James that's out that's uh, supposedly based on the Texas Receptus, but now it's in a modern language. Then it's not real. If it's true, it's not new, and if it's new, it's, uh, it's not true. Hmm. I don't need a new King James or a different King James. I got the original. Hmm. Uh, but he wants to steal your foundations. Why do you think it is when, when a preacher goes bad, half the congregation leaves? Uh, they have no foundation. You've heard me say time and 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 time again, it's not about the messenger, it's about the message. Amen. Hmm you down better put your faith in Jesus but he wants to steal your foundations hmm? can I say this he wants to steal your fellowship the greatest things we have is we have fellowship with the Savior he's a friend that's sticking closer than brother I like that song Miss Marcy sings that old hymn in the garden he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I'm one of his own what a blessing huh uh, but the Bible says what is separated between you and your God is your sin and your iniquity. He's trying to put a wedge between us and God. Our fellowship. Hmm? I'm glad my relationship with God can never be altered. I'm saved forevermore. But I can't get out of fellowship with Him. Hmm? You realize if I harbor sin in my life, He don't even hear my prayers. I don't want to be out of fellowship with God. I won't be out fellowship with Miss Annette. It's real bad around the house when, when she's giving you the cold shoulder. I learned a long time ago, silent treatment ain't good. Well, if I don't want silent treatment from Miss Annette, you think I want silent treatment from God? I like it when he speaks to me. I like it when I open the word of God and he's right there saying, I've been waiting on you here. Look at this. Huh? The devil wants to steal your fellowship. Can I say this? He wants to steal your fear of the Lord. Your reverence for God. Hmm. I know I'm old. Who else can I pick? Josh. I'll get to over there. Before. When did church become a casual thing? Used to, the back of your Bible said Holy Bible. And used to, it was a given. People knew when they came to the house of God, this was a holy place. I can remember, and I know I'm old, but I can remember the day and time when even the drunks didn't throw their beer cans in the churchyard because they knew that was a holy place. But now you got so-called believers that treat this place like it's a gymnasium or an auditorium or just some place they come to hang out oh my. Hmm? the devil has blinded people with the mentality we can win the world when we act like the world hogwash right. why do you think the bible says come ye out and be a separate people saith the lord and I'll be a father unto you huh Amen. we'll never win them being like them we'll just act like them the only way you'll ever win the world is if they see something different in you. Uh, 
And my dear friends, the devil wants to steal your reverence for God. When you realize God is holy and God called you to be holy because He's holy uh, and He's given you His holy word uh, and His house is to be a holy place uh, and you have a reverence for the things of God uh, and you treat them with respect and reverence, uh, my dear friends, that aggravates the devil to no end. Had some visitors not long ago come on Sunday. They come back Sunday night in blue jeans and sweatshirts, and they said, oh, we're sorry where we come from. We, we're a little bit more laid back on Sunday night. I said, well, this is as laid back as we get. I wasn't being flippant or mad. But I just believe God gave his best, and we ought to give our best. If your best is bibbed overhauls and a white t-shirt, wear your bibbed overhauls white, that doesn't bother me. Man looking on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Right. But a lot of people come out looking like bums because that's really what's in their heart. Hmm? Wow. Amen. Well, I mean, when Jesus was suspended between heaven and earth shedding his life's blood for us, he demands respect from us. We were on the auction block of sin. We were bought with a price, the precious blood of Christ. We ought to respect him and reverence him and fear him. The fear of the Lord is not being afraid of God. It is to utterly respect and revere him. That's what Job did. He uh, 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 feared God and eschewed evil. He hated every evil thing. And he feared the Lord. He reverenced God. My dear friends, we ought to do the same. The devil wants to steal that. I've been in Baptist churches and they talk about the man upstairs. He ain't the man upstairs. He's the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Huh? Talk about the man upstairs here. I'm thinking about Randy or Ryan. I'm thinking, what, what are they talking about? Huh? I certainly ain't going to pray to those two guys. We've been in trouble. Huh? Hmm? Seriously. Huh? I'll never forget. Where's my Aunt Lynn? I ain't letting tell you when I was young, I was a ball playing nut. And sometimes we had church on Saturday nights. You all die. It goes date night. We're going to church, huh? We church Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday. And I played ball on Saturday, and it didn't matter. I'd come to church. If I was in a uniform, mud all over me, whatever, and wasn't wearing a ball cap, I didn't wear the ball cap in the church house. Didn't matter how nasty my hair was. I was in church. Mom, there wasn't nothing else. Mama, you was in church. My mama, she'd tell you, my mama would have backhand me to no end if I wore a ball cap into church. Huh? Well, I see folks wearing ball caps in church. Huh? That's disrespect. Huh? See people bring a big old coffee cup into church. No, that's down about 500 feet. Huh? It's the house of God. The Bible says judgment must begin at the house of the Lord. But the devil wants to steal that and rob that. Just have this milk toast Christianity. Just go through the motion Christianity. Well, that's what the problem is with a lot of places. They're just going through the motions. Because the devil stealed. They're stolen. They're still. He wants to steal your fear of the Lord. There are just some things I don't do because I still, <laughs> I'm afraid of God. I never forget one time I talked about my mom. I never forget. I was, I wasn't, I don't know, seven or eight. But you got to understand. I've always been one that was quick to pop off at the mouth. <laughs> you don't believe that, do you, Poppy? Huh? Not for a second. No, not for a second. Never ever. <laughs> Mama was driving. She had the old Buick Skylark. She's a driving. I'm in the back seat. And she said something. She was talking about the Lord or something. I said. I said well, why would God do that? Before I even got it out of my mouth, she turned around and backhanded me with the back of her hand across my mouth. I do not advocate that, parents. You should not hit your children that way. <laughs> if you're going to discipline them, God's given them a better place to discipline them than in the mouth. But my point is, God, <laughs> she pulled that car off the side and she said, Don't you ever question God. He has a right. Uh, Say, so what happened? I never said anything about God anymore when Mama's driving. That's what happened. Uh, Y'all wonder why I got fat lips and my Mama used to beat me to death with my lips. Uh, uh, true story. Uh, I'm just trying to help you with something. She was telling me, you always reverence God. 
He's got a right. Huh? You say, well, yeah. preacher, did that work? I don't ask why about God anymore. And that's been 50 years. Are you listening? Uh, that stuck with me. I just told you about it, didn't you? Uh, I'm just trying to help you with something. The devil wants to steal that reverence and that fear of God from us. Amen. I see it. I see it in people's lives. They don't fear God, reverence God. Huh? Now, I told Brother Bob, I don't want to be a liar in the house of God. I told him I'd get over there too. Did you say great? No. Oh. I said, mm. Mm. <laughs> this is good. You'll like this. Okay, great. One of his biggest pet peeves. It comes around the church house. It's people throwing their gum out on the parking lot. That is true. Is that not true? He walks the parking lot scraping up your sorry no good gum because it's a pet peeve of his. And if you really feared God, you'd spit your gum out in somebody's driveway on the way here. Don't put it in God's driveway. All right? Isn't that right? Did I help you? That is. Huh? You're welcome. Huh? Huh? Seriously. Where you at, Slick? How many times when y'all clean the church you find fingernails? Huh? Quite a few. Quite a few, huh? How many times you find trash in the songbook racks? Quite a few. Quite a few, huh? huh? How many times you find garbage and stuff all in the pews and all that, huh? Hmm? 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 You know why people have their fingernails cut and popped off and chewed off and left in the church? Uh, pews and in the carpet and even church uh, people fingernails been in the songbook racks and why they leave the trash in the songbook racks and why they uh, uh, just because they don't respect the house of God hmm? if you're so bored in church that you've got to cut your fingernails stay home thank you brother Phil huh no, don't even watch it on TV, because if you're that bored, you're a mess. Huh? This is a God's house. Huh? Every now and then you've got to give a little warning about parents letting their kids run around and destroy God's house. You know why we want to take care of this place? Because it's God's house. He's blessed us with it. May not mean much to you, but it does to us that have been here and watch what God's done. All right, enough of that. Somebody about to pass out. I think <laughs> chief needs oxygen there. Give him some oxygen, all right? <laughs> he wants to steal your fight. And David came and delivered the supplies to his brothers and seen that uncircumcised Philistine, he said this, is there not a cause? What? He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of God? Is there not a cause? There are some things worth fighting for, and the things of God is one of them. Jude tells us to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Yes, sir. Can I say? You're in the battle long enough and you face wave of adversity after wave of adversity after wave of adversity after wave of adversity. You get to the point where you think, what's the use? And you get weary of fighting. And I'm just being honest with you. Sometimes you just get weary of fighting. That's why we need revival. That's why we have special services every now and then. That's why we have special things happen every now and then. Why? To re-energize us to stay in the fight. Because yes, he wants to steal your fight. The Bible says, if the foundations be destroyed, what will the righteous do? Why do we need to fight? What do you think about these kids over on the other side of the building? What kind of church are they going to have if we just let anything happen around here. Hmm? Hmm? You know, I know it's hard to believe, but it wasn't that long ago Jordan and Christian were little. I'm glad their Sunday school teachers still fought the good fight of faith. Hmm? Uh, I look around here. Look at them. I remember, I remember when Seth and Caitlin and Zachary were born. Huh? Now they're driving or about to start driving and Growing up real quick, I'm gonna be out of high school before long. What would happen if we just quit teaching the Bible to them? Hmm? Hmm? We gotta 
Keep fighting the fight. But he wants to steal your fight. Phil, he wants you to quit reading. Quit being a good daddy. Quit coming to church. He wants you to quit fighting. Quit going over to the jail. Quit going out and passing out tracts. He wants you to quit fighting. Sometimes the greatest fight is just fighting to stay still. He wants to steal your fight. I thought about this. He wants to steal your face. Your self-respect. He wants you to get guilt-ridden of what you aren't. Or what you used to be. He makes you feel like a lesser individual. Hmm? Makes you want to think, boy, look what I did. Look how I blew it. Look what I... Uh, he wants you to do, dwell in the past. But friend, if it's under the blood, it's gone. There's nobody had a worse past than the Apostle Paul, Saul of Tarsus. He said this, he said, This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark, the high calling of Christ Jesus. He said, That back there is nothing but trouble. Yeah, that's good. That will steal your still back there. He said, I'm just going to put my eyes on Jesus and head that way. Huh? Uh, he wants to steal your face, your self-respect. He wants you to be beaten up. He wants to beat you up. He wants to tell you what you're not and how you never can be and what you never could do and all this kind of junk. But I do remind you, he's a liar and the father of all lies. Hmm? Uh, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Hmm? See, he don't want you to stay in the book. Say, Brother Doug, you don't know what I did. I know Romans 8, 1 still in the book. There's therefore now no condemnation to them that walk after the Spirit. Hey, I want to tell you something, friend. You're not a loser. He is. But he wants to steal your still. He just wants you to stop being steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of God. He wants you to get sideways with God. He threw everything he could at Job. But he couldn't steal his still. God says he still holds fast his integrity. And in the end, Job got back double of everything that Satan took from him. Hmm? I've said this many times. If something befalls you, God has a right. God has a reason. He doesn't do anything just because he's bored. But he always has a reward for those who stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Now friend, if he's not been on your back, the devil will be on your back for too often long. This is how he is. If he tempted Jesus in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights, he's not afraid of you or me. And if you go study Matthew chapter number 4, the Bible says that Satan departed for a season. That means he came back and tempted Jesus again. If he tempted him, he'll want a piggyback ride from you too. And he'll lie to you. He'll try to intimidate you. He'll try to manipulate you. He's crafty. He's sly. And he'll do everything he can to get you sideways with him. So what do we do? We're to stand still and know that he is God. We're to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We're just to stand still and having done all to stand, stand there for. My dear friends, don't let him steal your still. Don't let him rob you of your position in Christ. Don't let him cause your light to stop shining. Amen. Too much is at stake. Amen. Hmm? What would this story be like if there was no chapter 3? If it got down there and Job threw in the towel and that was it. Hmm? Hmm. When your life is over and the last chapter is written, what's it going to say about me? Hopefully it says, By the grace of God, I am what I am. Hmm? Through God's grace, and it is sufficient, you can endure anything, you can overcome anything, and you can stand still in the power of Jesus Christ. Friends, stand still.
I'm thankful that in this sanctuary tonight, there's so many of you, I've watched you through the years just remain faithful and stand still. And the reason our church is what it is, it isn't because of the preacher. It's because of those that have put their faith in God and just made up their mind, I'm going to stand still and watch and see what God does. If you're here tonight, you're struggling, I've got good news. The devil only fights those he fears. And if you're struggling, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There is help today, and his name is Jesus. And tonight, he might just wanted you to be reminded, just keep standing still. In the end, it'll be all right. In the end, you'll be glad you didn't throw in the towel. Just keep standing for the things of God. Don't let the devil, don't let him win. I, I'm a competitor. I hate to lose. But if I'm going to lose, it certainly don't want to lose to the devil. Are you listening? Uh, so just keep standing still. Don't let him steal you anything from you. Just every time he shows up, just run and jump in the lap of Jesus. He'll lose all sight of you when he has to deal with Jesus. Are you listening? He wants to isolate you and get you away from Jesus. Huh? A wolf in sheep's clothing means a wolf has killed a sheep before. He wants to isolate you so he can start telling you all kinds of things and get you under a juniper tree and make you feel lower than a snake's belly. Don't get alone. Just run to Jesus, huh? He's never leave you nor forsake you. The next time the pressure gets on, get on your knees and say, Lord, at that time Jesus will show up. It'll be all right. Amen. Don't let the devil steal your still. Let's all stand, Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. Maybe you just need to come thank God that you haven't thrown the towel. Maybe you need to come tonight and say, God, just give me some help. I'm really facing that sorry, no good devil, and I need your help. Maybe you just want to come and thank him for being a friend that's sticking closer to a brother. Maybe you just want to come and tell him you love him tonight. Maybe just during this invitation, he spoke to you about something else. Maybe uh, uh, somebody really struggling here tonight, and the Lord just told you, just go put your arm around and tell them you love them. You don't know that might be the very thing that helps them. I know folks are praying all over the building. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. We're glad that you're greater than our enemy. And God, if he would have been all powerful, we'd have never been able to get saved in the first place. But I'm glad when you saved us, you broke the power of sin and Satan and self and gave us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. And God, there are days, Lord, when we're faced with adversity, we need that victory to shine forth. So help us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Now, God, you know the heart of everyone in here tonight. You know our yesterdays, our todays, and you even know our tomorrows. So, Father, I pray you'd help your people. Lord, strengthen them in their inner man and give them the grace they need to just keep standing in light and in lieu of our sorry adversary. Now, Father, if there's anybody here tonight unsaved, I pray that, Lord, the sweet Holy Ghost of God through cords of love will draw them unto thee that we might see them saved. God, speak to hearts now and get glory and help your people. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.